All right. Good morning, everybody joining us today. Welcome to our next webinar on uh, Lightning customization with Lightning App Builder. Uh, we have Eric Jacobson, uh, he, who's VP for product management for Lightning customization, joining us today. And along with him is Prakha Jain, who is a software engineering lead on, like, on the Lightning customization engineering team. And I'm Shashank Srivatswaya, uh, your host for today. And uh, let's, get, let's get this going. All right, before we start, let me tell you that uh, uh, since we have product management on the webinar today, you might make a lot of forward-looking statements. There is high probability. So in case you're making any buying decisions or purchasing decisions, uh, don't uh, make them based on what we're going to talk about today. All right, so we're all up for social. Uh, we are available on all our uh, social channels at the rate sales post tabs on Twitter, sales post developers on Facebook and LinkedIn. And you can also check out all our uh, Recorded, recorded videos on our YouTube channel, Salesforce Developers. And uh, please note, this webinar is being recorded for sure. And the recording and the slides will be posted soon after we conclude the webinar on the same URL that you used for your registrations. And a little more of housekeeping items to just uh, uh, let you know about. We will do uh, a Q&A at the end, but you don't have to wait till the end to ask your questions. There is a questions tab in your GoToWebinar can just use it uh, to post your questions while you're uh, while the webinar is going on and we'll pick as many questions as possible and answer them for you towards the end of the webinar All right if you have any further questions you can always feel free to post them on our developer forums developer.salesforce.com slash forums and one more thing to note uh, is that in case of any issues with audio or video or any other technical issues all you have to do is just quit the GoToWebinar and just join it, join back in. That takes care of 99% of the issues. Okay, so with that, uh, let's keep going. If you have anything um, to let us know or something not working right, just use the questions tab and put your thoughts there. All right, over to Eric, who is going to uh, start off with uh, the agenda for today. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Lightning Pages, Lightning, Lightning App Builder, Lightning Apps, and Eric is going to share his vision of Lightning customization, and then Prakar is also going to show you some developer stuff that you can do on uh, on Lightning App Builder for Lightning components. Over to you, Eric. Exactly. Uh, thank you, Shashank. Perfect. Great. I'm glad to be here on India India Standard Time. So this is this is this is fun. This is a first for me. So we're going to talk today about, as Shashank said, we're going to talk about Lightning Pages and App Builder, and then get into some of the development side of it, talking about some of the ways that we can build components so that they will show up inside App Builder and be great for your admins and your users. So let's start first off by talking about Lightning Pages themselves. When we first created the Lightning Experience, it was important for us to embrace the idea of metadata. We've long had the idea of metadata for controlling our page layouts, our fields, our related lists, our actions. But with Lightning, we said we wanted to take that a step further. We wanted metadata to control the experience of the page, to actually control the content that we see when we're looking at a screen inside of the Lightning experience. So we've introduced this concept that we call the Lightning Page. And what makes Lightning Pages so powerful is that a Lightning Page is described using a Lightning Page template. That allows us to divide the page into a set of regions. And you can see here in the example, in the example template that I'm showing, this template has four regions. And now in each of those regions, we can then place one or more Lightning components. And so this is really shows the show starts to show off the power of this lightning platform here is that we can bring in a series of lightning components and work with them as as building blocks here to construct our experience. And what makes this really powerful as well is these components can come from a variety of different sources. So within our component ecosystem, there's the standard Salesforce components. These are the ones that we provide for you automatically. They're built in. They're ready to go. Now, that may not give you everything you need, so you can go and you can build your own custom components. And we're gonna talk briefly about that later on in the talk today. But the idea is you can create your own custom components. They're a combination of HTML like markup, quite a bit of JavaScript, and a tiny little bit of CSS, but actually the Salesforce Lightning Design System takes care of most of that for you. But you know what? You might not even have to create the components yourself because that's where our ecosystem comes into play as well, is that our app exchange partners are now building Lightning components and making those available. And at last count, there's over 170 packages of components that are available that you can directly install from AppExchange 
and we'll even talk about later is that right from within App Builder, you can even get directly to the App Exchange to install those components. So App Builder, therefore then, the tool that we use at the heart of it, this is our editor for our Lightning Pages. Now the good thing to note about Lightning Pages is they, are, they fully support our Salesforce metadata platform. They're fully exposed by our metadata APIs. They're packageable. You can use them in all of these different ways. You can even go in and extract them and edit them directly as XML. But I challenge anybody to say that you'd be able to make the customizations as quickly, even in your fastest text editor, than you could do inside the app builder. Because we've created an experience here that is optimal for working with these pages, making it drag and drop simple to add a component to a page, point and click simple to be able to configure the properties of it. So it's really ideal, a really ideal experience for admins and developers alike to be able to go in and work with this metadata. I think that it's always about picking the, the best tool for the job, and that's whatever is going to make it easiest to get the job done. So we've got our Lightning App Builder, and with it, we're editing Lightning Pages. Over the last couple of releases, we've made some significant investment and some enhancements to the components and the pages themselves. Uh, we've added a brand new accordion component, so much like the tabs component that you can use that will allow you to divide up the space horizontally and show additional additional regions of components, you can now use the accordion component to do effectively the same thing in a vertically stacked approach. Um, some new components there. Um, the list view component, which is a really a real popular one that we introduced a couple of releases ago, really up updating the filter list component capabilities, now gains inline edit capability as well. So the inline edit that you love from list views is now available directly on any list view component to be placed inside of App Builder there. So that's brand new as of summer 18, which everybody should now have. So that's, that's a really exciting one here. We've also been really, really proud of the work that we've done around a feature called dynamic lightning pages. The idea here is being able to say that the set of components on your page can be conditional. In other words, some components can actually disappear or appear based on, based on data. And it, initially in the, uh, in the first release of it, it was based on data from the record that you're currently looking at on a record page. But then we've enhanced that further. So with the spring release, you, gain, you gained access to data from related records. You gained access to the user. And I'll show you this one when we do a demo in a few minutes. But this is really powerful, because you can now use this on any type of page and have the appearance of components be conditional based on some aspect of the user record. It can be a standard or a custom field from that user record, and that's a really powerful one. As well as form factor allowing for app pages to conditionally show components on, say, a phone versus on the desktop. Coming soon on our roadmap here is that we're going to add support for custom and standard permissions. This is another really nice one because it gives you now the ability that you can control who sees a particular component based on a permission set that you've, that you've attached to that user. So we know that pages, pages can only be assigned by profile, but now this is giving you the ability to, allow, to bring in the use of permission sets to control what content is actually being shown on that page. So I think that's going to be a real, um, a real improvement in terms of manageability of your pages there. The beauty of the Lightning Page system, as I mentioned before, was the idea of the templates. So built in, there are a series of templates that are available for you, depending on the page type that you're looking at. And with those, you're able to directly bring in the components that you're looking for. But additionally, as a developer, you can create your own custom Lightning Page template. And Prakar is going to talk a little bit about that um, later on in the webinar. But the beauty of it is that under the covers, a Lightning Page template is, in fact, just a Lightning component. It has some additional special tags in its markup, but it is just a Lightning component. So all the skills that you're developing for Lightning components will apply as well if you want to actually create your own custom page template and define a unique shape to the page that you're building. Now, with all of this power, with all this flexibility that we've talked about, comes some responsibility. And that's about de designing a page that's going to provide a great experience for your users. Because with the app builder, certainly, could you go and create a page that has every possible component on it? Of course you could. But we really don't recommend you do that for multiple reasons. One, a page that has components all over the place is not going to deliver a great user experience. Users are not going to, not going to be able to understand where they find the information they need. But more so, 
is that there's a performance implication. Because sure, you can tell us to put 30 components directly, directly on the record page, but behind the scenes, the data for all of those components has to be loaded. It has to come from the cloud down to your, down to your user's browser. And if they don't need most of that information most of the time, don't make them pay the penalty of loading. So the thing to think about is what do most of your users need to see most of the time? And then you can optimize for that. So this gives you the ability to go in and say, let me show you the components that I need most of the time and take those additional components and place them onto a secondary tab. So for example here, if I'm using the tabs control, I can place other components onto some of those tabs. And that then gives me the ability to say that those additional components are only shown if the user actually needs them. So they're there, they're just, a, they're just one click away on the page, but you won't, pay the, you won't pay the penalty of downloading the component and any data that that component needs unless the user goes and clicks on it. Okay, with that, let's take a look at a quick demo. So here we are. We're on a very customized homepage experience Inside of inside of inside of Lightning Experience here, so this certainly does not look like your standard sales homepage because I've gone in already and done a lot of customization. I've brought in some some custom components to really transform the look and feel of this. I've built a um, I've built out a page here for a company that creates um, electric cars. So it's a imaginary electric car company, if you will, and they have a very customized homepage here. You can see here in the top right corner of the page, you'll see here that it's actually telling me something kind of interesting. There's a company party Friday Friday afternoon. Well, that sounds exciting, but it's in the lobby of my, presumably of the headquarters of the office, which is great if I'm in that location. But what if I happen to be based in a different city? I'm going to be pretty disappointed if I if I find out that everybody else is getting to have getting to have fun and we're not. So let's look at how we can use App Builder and the power of dynamic lightning pages to provide some more flexibility here. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the gear menu in the top right because I happen to be an admin for this particular org. And I'm going to select the edit page option there from the drop down. What that's going to do for me now is it's going to go and it's going to open that page inside of Lightning App Builder. And what we'll see as it loads is that we're going to see in the center of the, in center of the App Builder here is where we'll see a version of the exact page that we were just looking at in Lightning Experience is represented here directly inside of App Builder. So we've giving, we're giving you a direct representation of what you were seeing as an end user now here inside the tool for designing the page. On the left hand side, on the left hand side of the screen, you see my list of components. Remember, we talked about that component ecosystem. And so it starts out there with my list of standard components. And that list may vary depending on the type of pages I'm looking at. You may see more or less components as, as appropriate for that page followed by any custom components. These are components that I would have created directly inside my org itself, followed by my managed components. And this would be any of the components that I've chosen to bring in from App Exchange. Speaking of which, if I wanted to get more components from App Exchange, it's as simple as clicking the link in the bottom, the bottom of that components palette there, which will actually then give me the ability to directly launch the App Exchange, and I can actually then search for components right inside of App Builder without even leaving the tool I can actually bring in packages of components, um, some from Salesforce Labs, some from our great partners, and be able to bring those in and continue working with them right on the page, right as, I, right as I'm building out my application or, or experience here. So let me go ahead and dismiss the app exchange here, because we'll get back to the task at hand, which is that we've got this component here that tells me that the company party is Friday, it's Friday afternoon. On the right-hand side of this component here, you can see there's all my properties. So I'm using the image banner component, which is one of the um, one of the managed components there that came from a Salesforce Labs package. And you can see it's got a lot of a lot of configurable properties here for what I want that image banner to be. The image itself is a, is a field that I can configure, and then the caption, the title. Well, I could go in there and I could edit the title and make it something generic and just say everybody have a good weekend. But that's not really the spirit of what I want to do here. I actually want to conditionally be able to have different a different a different component for different groups of users so the way that i'm going to do that is let's start off by taking this existing component if i scroll down here we'll see there's an option at the very bottom that says set component visibility and so i'm going to use that option i'm going to add a visibility filter to this component and i'm going to say that, you know what this one should only be shown now basically from the user if their office location 
and we'll find the office location, which is a custom field that I've added to the, to the user object. If their office location is equal to, and then it's a pick list field, so I get my values, is equal to HQ, in other words, headquarters. That's what I want them to see this message here that the company party is Friday in the lobby. Okay, that seems pretty good. So now what would, it, what would happen is that if they're not based in HQ, that component would just disappear entirely. They would see nothing. But I don't, want, I don't want everybody that's not in HQ to be totally left out. So let's go in and add an additional component. Basically, let's, give, let's make sure everybody else gets to have some fun as well. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go and just first we're going to start by duplicating this component. So I'm going to go over to my toolbar in the top left of App Builder here, and I'm going to select the copy option. And basically what that's done is the complete copy of that component instance there with, with all its configuration, all its metadata. Now I'm going to basically just go in here and paste and add another copy of it. So now we've got two copies of that same component. And we'll take the second one here and we'll just change the message. So basically what we're going to say is weekend take your team out for a lunch and expect it. So basically everybody gets to have some fun. So if you're now what we've done is we've created an alternate message there. Have a great weekend, take your team out for a lunch and expense it. However, right now it's still configured for everybody that's in HQ. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that visibility filter, and we're going to say that that one is when it's not equal to HQ. So in other words, we have one message for our, for our, for our employees that are based in the headquarters and another message for everybody else. So what we'll do is you'll see that each of those components is badged with a little orange eyeball icon there. That's letting us know that it has a visibility filter attached. And once we save the page, we'll have committed that metadata. So now everybody is able to see the update. It's already been activated, so it's wired into the system. And when we jump back over to look at our page, what we'll see is that this user was in fact located in HQ, so we see the original message. But notice that we're only seeing one message because it's conditionally showing the component based on data from that user. If I were to go look at, if I were to go look directly at uh, Tim's service over here, we'll see that when we bring him up, he is in fact, his office location is based as HQ. If I, I were to go and edit him, I could change his office location. We'll change him to be based in New York. We'll save that. We go back and refresh the home page, and you'll notice that it's now giving the alternate message because he's no longer based in HQ. So just like that, we relocated Tim and he gets a different homepage experience tailored based on who he is. Okay, let's go back to some slides and talk a little bit about Lightning Apps because Lightning Apps are the real or some of the other power behind all of this. With with Lightning, we really took an app-centric view of the world and said that we can create task-specific applications because this will really help to make users more productive. If you give them tools that are organized around specific specific goals, specific tasks that they're trying to accomplish, you can help people to have to get more done. And with Lightning Apps, you've got a couple of great options and some great tools that are available to you. First off is control over the navigation of the app. You saw that when I was when I was bringing in my application there just a moment ago, I had the standard navigation. In other words, the tabs across the top represented objects or custom tabs that I was looking at there. That's the, the standard default navigation that you get for Salesforce. But the alternate option that you have when you're creating a custom lightning app is that you can use our console navigation. This is a feature that began life first in our service cloud, but is now available to any custom application you build on the, on the lightning platform here. And it's a great way, it's a great tool for any type of high volume, high productivity type of application where users are going to need to be working with multiple records, whether that's inbound cases in a service context, leads in, a, in an inside sales type of environment. It could even be job applicants and you're building a tool for your HR recruiters. All of those are great options for, for looking at the console style of navigation. As well, when you're building a Lightning app, you have the utility bar across the bottom of your application screen there is a, um, is a row that you can place one or more Lightning components. These are persistent. They're available to you to, use, to access from anywhere within 
that lightning app. It's a great way to place little utilities. They can be tools that you may want to use. If you're, if you're in the process of moving from classic over to lightning, this is a great, a great solution for anything you may have used the sidebar for in the classic experience can be, can be repurposed as a utility bar component here inside of lightning. And the real power of lightning apps comes from the idea of being able to have discrete lightning pages, these lightning record pages that we've been talking about, Per app. And you might ask, wait, why is that important? Well, take this scenario where when you consider selling to an account versus providing service for that same account, my feeling is that those are very different tasks. And therefore, the set of tools that you'd want to provide to that user would be different. In other words, the set of lightning components that you need to be able to optimally provide service to a customer is very different than the set of lightning components that you would need to optimally sell to that exact same customer. So with lightning pages per app, you can now have a truly separate experience, a different set of lightning components for those two unique use cases. Now you might be thinking, well, I can just, I've always been able to have my page layouts vary by profile. And that's true. Your page layouts could vary by profile. But users can only ever have one profile attached to them at any given time. So if you have users that need to perform multiple discrete tasks, they were out of luck because they couldn't get differentiated experiences. But now with the power of lightning and the ability to switch apps, it's just that easy that I can just switch from one app to the next to be able to go in and get an experience that is now tailored for my use case. And that's the real power there of the lightning apps. And with that, I want to hand it over to Prakar who's going to talk to us about building components for AppBuilder. So I just talked a lot about how we can use AppBuilder, how we can use those components. Let's talk about how we can actually get those components to show up inside of the Builder tool. Cool. Thanks, Eric, for that wonderful introduction to Lightning Platform and Lightning AppBuilder. Now we're going to talk a little more in detail about how do we design components for AppBuilder. So uh, most of you are aware of what a Lightning Component Bundle is. Uh, a lightning component bundle effectively consists of eight resources, the component, which is the markup itself, the controller, helper, and the renderer, which are the JavaScripts, design SVG, we're gonna talk in detail, and these are the two that I'm gonna focus on during today's webinar, the style, obviously, the style of your component and the documentation associated with the component. So let's get down to the design file that is, or a design resource that is associated with component. Uh, the design is actually a metadata about the component. Uh, this is the information that the Lightning App Builder or other design time tools like say, the Community Builder uses to figure out what the design time behavior of that component should be. And it also helps you specify, you know, kind of attributes that need to be exposed to the design time. Uh, certain constraints or validations that you want on those attributes uh, during the design time. I talked about you know exposing attributes. Now this is very interesting. Eric briefly you know demoed you how you could actually change the entire message. The interesting part was you didn't really have to code or look at the component or change the component's behavior, but you were still able to change the way the component was displaying its message. Now that was truly made possible by exposing one of the attributes on the component as a design attribute. So if you remember when Eric was demoing, on the right hand side, he had what is known as the property editor, which is used to specify values of these attributes, which are specified on the component. Now this, for, for the attribute which is specified on the component, for it to be visible on the Lightning App Builder, you've got to specify it as a design attribute on the design resource. Now, what does it do? It enables the attribute to be edited, and Eric demoed that to you a little while back. Uh, what are the other things that the design uh, file is capable of? So you can set the label. The you know I'm going to talk about where these labels appear. So in this case, when you set the label for a component, uh, the list of components in the left hand side, the palette as we call it, uh, and the name that appears is actually picked up from that label. Uh, you can actually add a description explaining what is the behavior of the component, describing what the component really does. You can even set defaults for the attribute values in the sense, 
suppose there is an attribute value which makes sense for most of your use cases, but you would still want that to be uh, you know, changeable. So in that case, you specify a default, and if the admin wants to go and change it, he can always and anytime do that. Now, I also mentioned that you can specify the validations on these uh, attributes in the design resource. Now, what can those validations be? For example, let's say you want to expose a attribute which controls uh, you know, a slide, slider, and it has a range from, say, 0 to 100. And you want that the value should always be between 0 to 100. So you can actually specify a min-max validation for strings, which says you know, the minimum value has to be 0, maximum value has to be you know, 100. So what the design file does is it gives you a lot of flexibility. It allows you it allows you to specify various attributes, give you control over what can be specified, uh, and as well as what exactly are the values that the admin can specify for them. Now, another thing that we can do with the design files is actually specify for a certain attribute to act, you know, act as a dynamic pick list. Now, how do you do that? So dynamic pick list, the moment you specify a data source for a certain variable, uh, or certain attribute on the design file, it becomes a dynamic uh, pick list. Now these are apex packed, so that means you get a programmatic control over what values can be specified. And what that means is that you can have your own custom logic depending on what the user is doing, and you can specify values that the user can pick up, and then you know sort of your component gets that value. So it's a lot of flexibility that these dynamic pick lists provide. Uh, obviously, it's, it's it's a lot more flexible than Thomas separated list can give you a lot of dynamic behavior uh, in the design time. And moving on to so we briefly talked about the uh, the design resource. Now, what about the SVG file? So, if you guys noticed while Eric was demoing, there was a component palette on the left hand side. This was the list of components where all the custom uh, components, all the standard components, all the components from the managed package would come. Now, as a component developer, you want your component to uh, have its own icon. Like here, you see the activities uh, has a different icon. The chatter has a different icon. And you can very well specify your own icon. And for that, you have to upload an SVG into the SVG resource. And, uh, and, and that's what gets displayed here as an icon. And again, just to reiterate, the label that I specified or talked about a little while earlier that's specified on the design file uh, can control the name. Uh, say chatter publisher over here even when your component is named something else uh, that's what is the power that design resource and the SVG files provide you now with all the power comes a little bit of responsibility as well uh, and in that sense you've got to plan your component to be future proof so once you expose your component and you expose certain design properties you have to remember that these are effectively an API for your customers. You have to treat them like that. You have to ensure all your updates are backwards compatible and that nothing is broken with the changes that you're making because, again, as I said, that's, a, that's an API. Now, let's also give it a thought that before you build out and ship your company, you have to really think about your design. What are the values that would really make sense for your customer? What is it that you really want to expose in your design file? And that's very, very important for your component to be backwards compatible and survive you know, being as good as an API. Now, that's, that here's another interesting feature on the Lightning platform, and that's called Lightning Templates. Uh, so Eric briefly mentioned that a Lightning page is pivoted around what we call as a template. Uh, Salesforce ships about 57 templates out of the box, but again, let's say none of them meet your needs really, and you want to build your own. And that's really, really possible with what we've done. Now, we gave it a lot of thought, knowing that most of our developers are Lightning developers. We wanted the templates to be also a seamless experience for them uh, to create uh, custom templates. So these custom templates are effectively nothing but they are Lightning components. Uh, you can style the template just like you do a standard Lightning component. You can make them so they support adaptive components. Uh, and they give you a lot of flexibility in terms of how you want to place components uh, on the regions and all that stuff. So how do we differentiate a 
template from say another lightning component it's fairly straightforward a template has to specify certain interfaces now what are those interfaces you might ask and here they are so depending on for which page type you're exposing the template you will need to implement one of these interfaces so for record home template it's going to be lightning record home template for the at home template it's going to be lightning at home template and for the home page uh, the very page that eric demoed to you it's going to be lightning home template so it's, it's as simple and lightning component with these interfaces gets you your custom template then it's just about writing your standard markup css and get the thing done and deliver what your customers are looking forward to now let's get a bit into the code and as to how that is done now remember eric mentioned a little while back that a template consists of multiple regions and each of these regions is nothing but collection of one or more lightning components now because it's uh, an aura or a lightning uh, component here what happens in this case is you specify an attribute here in this case which is called region one and you specify its type as aura component array now that's very important because a region is nothing but collection of lightning components and it is this type which enables it to actually contain multiple components in that region now the one here i'm talking about is a very very simple custom template it just has one region where you can stack components one on the top of the other uh, i'm going to give you a demo with a little more complicated uh, custom template just in a while also note that this is a template for the record page because it implements lightning code and record home template interface so it's as simple as that you have the basic building block ready and this thing will be actually a custom template once you load it up now that was the markup part of a custom template how do we specify which attribute has to be interpreted as a region now that's again very simple uh, you go to the designer source and specify flexi page templates all properties related to a custom template would be in compass between the flexi page template xml tags in this case the flexi page region you specify name as region one also note that this name is exactly the same as the one on the component and then we have something called as a default width now i'm going to talk about it a little while here now as I, as I said that you know your custom template can be adaptive and gives it uh, gives the power to your components to adapt based on how what is the region width but how do your components come to know in what region are they placed what is the width of the region or what is the total space available for them now that is something that the default width attribute here takes care of it can take four values small medium large and extra large and this is the exact same value that gets passed on to the component that requests the width information using the lightning flexi page region info component that is shipped out of the box so this gives the components the ability to you know sort of draw themselves in a way that is appropriate depending on the space that's available on the region now with that i'll switch over to a brief uh, demo here now let's go to the developer console and i have a lightning record home template right there so this is a template for the record home and if you go here there's one thing that i would really want to point out is if you see we specify about the the regions here which have the name header one header two all of them are of the type or a component array but also note that you can have your own attributes as well you can have other attributes which control the behavior of your template in this case s1 open is a attribute of type boolean and again we have a default value here that's something that we talked about while explaining the uh, attribute thing so now let's go down and in the markup what we do here is we actually specify on line number 21 that the header has to be placed in this particular manner what is very important to note here is that the app builder does not allow interaction with the components in order to click protect the data now but with templates coming into picture you might want to do some fancy stuff let's say for example this this particular template collapses certain regions and the user can collapse it bring it back on and that would require you to interact with the component right while you're in the app builder now how do you do that again we made it very very simple for you all you have to do is apply the css marker called design allow interaction and boom all of your 
template can now have interaction. The admin can be in the app builder and still interact, uh, interact with the template. And that's about what uh, do you need to do on the markup file. Now let's get back to the design file. Uh, now here the design file, again, we have multiple regions. So we specified the XP page region. We have named it as header one. And if you've noticed on the markup also, the name was exactly header one. Now, that's very important because that's how we map uh, an attribute on the markup to the attribute on the design file. We have specified the default width, which is very important for each of the regions, depending on how the markup is going to lay them out on a page. Now, you notice there are other couple of information that we talked about in the previous slides. One was the label. I'm going to, I did bri briefly tell you where those labels appear for lightning components, but what about the lightning custom page templates? I'm going to briefly give you a demo of where these remember the label three column with collapsing headers. Other interesting thing we have is also the description. As I said, the description was for the components would appear once you hover with them as uh, as an info bubble. But what happens in case of a custom template? Because the custom template for sure doesn't get included in the list of components right there. So let's let's get down to actually creating a new page using this custom template. Now I've hit the new uh, from the Lightning App Builder start page, and I'll choose the record page. Why? Simply because our template was a recurring template. I hit next, and let's call it a demo page. And I would want to create something for the case object. So here we go, and we hit next. Now, what you see here is a list of standard templates are shipped out of the box, which are available uh, for you guys to use and create your own lightning pages. At the same time, what you also see is a custom template which appears here. Now, what you see here is a three column with collapsing header. Now, notice this is the exact same text, the exact same label that you guys specified on the design file. So that's where it is dis displayed. Also note that the description on the components markup comes down here, full width header with subheader regions with collapsing functionality above three columns. Now this gives your admin right here all the information about how the page looks like. You might be wondering where does this image come from? Now that's where the SVG comes into picture for custom templates. And that's the image that you give your admins to be able to really visualize how the page is gonna be laid out. And that's so powerful because it just Admin has all the information he needs to make that decision right here on this screen. So with that, I hit finish and an app builder loads here. Now I talked about allowing interaction with the custom template. Now you see in a normal case of a normal template, you, this interaction would not be allowed because they would not have implemented the CSS markup. Now, because we have implemented that and use that CSS markup, you can see I and toggle their behavior here. So that's that's really powerful. How you could drag and drop multiple components, apply various kinds of dynamic rules on them, and give your customers a very, very rich experience. Uh, with that, I think I am done, and uh, I will be handing it back to Shashank. Thank you so much, Eric and Prakar, uh, but we are not done yet. <laughs> we have a lot of questions from our attendees today. and uh, That's great. Yeah, we'd like to post, uh, post them to you. Let's see if we can answer them. Can yeah. you? <laughs> we'll, we'll, certainly, we'll certainly do our best. And I think the good news is that you know, the conversation doesn't end here today either, is that if you have questions that you think of later, you can, you can find us on the Trailblazer community. And we have a dedicated group specifically for Lightning App Builder, where um, the product team and our engineers are, are looking at that group. And you can ask questions on the Lightning App Builder group on the Trailblazer community. There's also the Lightning Now group on the Trailblazer community, which is a great place to ask any of your questions about Lightning Experience and the process of moving to Lightning Experience. And then Shashank, we've got a third one as well, right? Yeah, we've got a third one. We have a specific uh, chat uh, a Trailblazer community group for our India and APAC time zone developer webinars and we are going to just uh, put all our developer webinar stuff there you can feel free to join us there and uh, follow what's going on 
at the same time you can always join our conversation at salesforce tabs uh, that is our twitter handle you can feel free to reach out to us on that okay are you ready some, ready for some questions yes yes hit us <laughs> All right, so uh, one question for Eric. I think this uh, is around what you were talking about, the performance of uh, the pages and what we can do for that. So uh, when we have many fields on the opportunity uh, object, for example, uh, is it possible to probably split the details tab into two tabs, maybe primary or secondary, or what is your uh, suggestion on that? Certainly, this is something that we, that we hear that we hear often, and we, we see customers that have uh, page layouts that in some cases have several hundred fields on them, and that certainly can become a little bit of a challenge. Today, that is not something that we directly support, but it is something that we are actively working on. So I encourage everyone to pay attention as we um, as we as we get towards Dreamforce later this year. Um, you'll start to see the see some uh, sneak peeks of where we're heading in that direction about providing exactly that type of flexibility to be able to break apart a page layout. In the meanwhile. The alternative that I can offer, at least um, in the near term, is that one approach that you can consider taking is to make the, the full details not be your primary component. Have that be available on a secondary tab. And if there's just a subset of fields that you want to display to users, use one of the other components that can display field data. It might be using the path component, um, that, for example, up on an opportunity or a lead or a case is a great way to show some key fields about what stage you're at in that particular in that for that particular record. You can also use the related record component. I know the name is slightly confusing. It implies that it's showing data from an, from an additional related data, uh, but it can be used on the object itself. So you can use the related record component, and that would be then paired with a quick action layout to allow you to show a subset of the fields. So if you just have a small grouping of fields that you want to have there on your primary tab, that's an option for you. All right, that's great. So one more question, simple question, I think. What is the maximum number of components that can be added to one lightning page? So, I mean, yes, there are limits. And uh, technically speaking, the way that it works is that you can place up to 25 components per region. Now, tabs each count as a separate region. So you can very quickly figure out that you can, you can place a lot of components on the page. But remember my, my, my caution there about designing, designing good pages. And so think about your user, think about what what's necessary there, but also remember that you could, build, you, could, you could put 25 components on the page that could all be very simple components and the page, the page will still be super fast. Or you could create one component that's really inefficient and your page will be very slow. So it's not it's not really about the number of components. It's really about what each component is doing. That makes total sense. Okay, so one more question around uh, utility bar. So mm -hmm. can we add the utility bar for standard page layouts as well? So the utility bar can be used for console style apps as well as standard navigation apps. The catch here, the, ca the caveat for it is that you have to be a lightning app. And I think there was also a question about what was the difference between a standard app and a lightning app. And so basically, these are two flavors of custom application. Your classic app are the apps that are truly from classic. You can access them from within Lightning Experience, but they don't have access to some of these new pieces of metadata. So if you want to be able to use utility bars, if you want to be able to use um, Lightning Pages per app, if you want to be able to do nav personalization, which we didn't talk about today, but it's a really cool feature, all of those require the app to be a Lightning app. The good news is that with just two clicks, you can upgrade any standard classic application that you have uh, to a Lightning app. All right, great. There's so much flexibility in the Lightning app builder and the way we are building Lightning pages. So uh, one of our attendees has a question. Can we just use it to build websites? So the app builder is really designed for editing Lightning pages, which are going to be an aspect of an app that you're building inside of Lightning Experience. So this is basically something you're building for an employee-facing application that would either be running inside of Lightning Experience or in the Salesforce mobile application. It's not really for general purpose, uh, like customer-facing websites. That would be something that would be more that would be more aligned with our Salesforce communities project. All right. So when we're talking about communities, there was one question around. Uh, uh, one of our attendees wondering whether we were actually showing a community page because it was that customized. 
That was that was the stand, that was the home page with the standard home page template, but thoroughly customized using a combination of custom components and the built-in theming capabilities of Lightning Experience. So that was that was Lightning Experience, everybody. That was not that was not a Salesforce community. All right, so that answers that. Some yeah. quick confusion cleared there. Exactly. <laughs> but a lot of the things that Prakar was talking about absolutely do apply to communities as well. So for example, when you're when you're building components and you want those exposed and you're thinking about your design file and those capabilities, those automatically apply to communities as well. So any of the properties that you expose in the design attributes, that applies for communities. But to make the com component itself visible in the community, there would be some different interfaces that your component must implement to basically make it enabled for the community's context versus the Lightning Experience context. All right, so there was one question uh, around that as well. Thanks for answering that, uh, sure. along with the uh, previous question. So we have a couple of questions for Prakar as well. Uh, our developers are curious about, uh, so how do we uh, give the biggest values in this design parameters? Now we've made it very simple. You simply specify another attribute called this data source. And as I talked about it, uh, it can be either a static comma separated list, or you could have an Apex data source sitting behind that. Uh, for the Apex data source, you would have to write an Apex class. There are plenty of examples available in our documentation out there that you can use. And that's how you simply specify the values for Apex list. Yeah, that Apex class is it's fairly straightforward. It's yeah. what? A couple of, I think there's like two static methods you have to yes, implement. That's... And basically what that'll do is it, it brings back then the list of values that you want it to dynamically display. Correct. And the nice thing with it as well is that from, from that you can also you can get the context of what object you're in in yes. that index class as well. There's a there's a there's a there is, a, there is an approach that allows you to do that. So you can make that you can make that dynamic query uh, a little a little bit context context sensitive. All right, so there was one question around a similar thing that you answered where uh, will this design attribute will actually be available in the community when the component is used? And the answer would be yes, right? Yes, in fact, the design file equally applies to community builder or for that matter, any design tool that you see in Salesforce. Mm -hmm. uh, these are very generically written, so once you master the art of writing design files, you have an array of design time tools which can make use of them. Exactly. So same thing applies for components that you build for the utility bar, components that you would be using in Lightning Flux. All of those, all of those would share the attributes that are exposed via the design files. All right. Okay. So there were some uh, generic questions around uh, uh, what are the skills needed to build components, and a couple of questions around components and stuff. Uh, though are still a little off topic, we'll still address it at a high level. So when we usually build Lightning components, uh, we usually it's the JavaScript based. So we have of building with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is basically what you need to ramp up on using this component framework, Lightning component framework. And uh, when we need to work with data, Apex knowledge would be uh, even better. Any have anything else you want to add to this? No, I think those, I think those are the key skills there. I mean, and there's some great there's some great Trailhead content specifically about that. So that even if, you know, even if you're not a developer, you can get started, um, you know, building your first component. All right. Okay. So uh, one more question for Prakar. So uh, what is the Aura dot component uh, uh, that we used inside, and what is it made of and stuff? Okay. So uh, as Eric talked about briefly earlier. A region, or, or let me start with the template. The template consists of multiple regions, and each region is a collection of lightning components. Now, Aura component array, basically Aura component represents the way we can specify an attribute to take the component as a value. And since we have multiple components within a region, we specify an Aura component array for that, so that we can populate the region with multiple uh, lightning components and then they can get, get displayed on the lightning page. Okay, so that was that. So there was one question, uh, I think Eric would be the best to answer this. So can we display a flow on a lightning page? Absolutely. So you've got a few different ways that you can do this in fact. Um, there's a standard component called the flow component. And so if you have any flows that contain screens, they are automatically interpreted as a lightning component. So basically, you get a native lightning rendering of that flow that you can place right on the page. 
Alternatively, you can invoke the flow from an action. And so you can have a button that would therefore then be accessible from your highlight panel that would bring up that would then bring up the flow in a modal. You have either option that, there for bringing flow directly into your lightning pages. All right. Okay. So one question for you, Prakar. So in dynamic pick lists in the lightning component design, uh, can we can the user actually choose multiple values? Like is it like a multi-select pick list? Is, is something like that available or is it just single pick list for now? Well, for now it's a single pick list. Uh, the admin can just pick up one value to display. Uh, but that's that's what it is as of now. Uh, Multi-select is on the roadmap, but not available yet. So watch out for all our announcements in the daily course or further. <clears throat> all right. So uh, there is one question, uh, though it's basic. We'll still uh, look at it uh, and clarify a little bit. So there's this new Lightning customization thing that we're talking about. Is it like a new feature in the Lightning app builder or? Uh, what how does it look? Well, really, I mean, light, lightning, lightning customization is the overall umbrella of all the things that you're going to do to tailor the lightning experience to make it to make it optimal for your users. So, App Builder is is certainly one of the main tools that you use to customize the lightning experience, but it's just one it's it's one of many. So, when we when we talk about lightning customization, really, we're thinking about it. That's that's my team. That's our that's our group here at Salesforce that focuses on building the metadata and tools that our admins and developers are able to use to accomplish these tasks. It's not a it's not a product or a feature in of itself. So is, would it be safe to say that when you say lightning customization, we mean customizing the lightning experience? Absolutely. You know, and everything that's involved in that. Anything that's involved in that, and App Builder is one of the most powerful tools to do that. Is For that sure. what I understand? Right. And certainly, you know, we've been and we've been making App Builder more powerful over the last couple of releases. You would have seen uh, going back to the spring release that we brought in the ability to not only edit a single Lightning page, but to be able to bring your app settings into App Builder as well as to be able to switch between any of the pages that you're using in a given Lightning app are all now seamlessly integrated into a single app builder experience there. So we've really tried to make that tool a more holistic experience for customizing your apps. All right, so that kind of uh, concludes the most of the questions that we had today, uh, whatever we could take. Uh, I'd like to thank both of you again for uh, taking your time in helping our developer community understand more about customization and app builder. And Eric, I hope you enjoy the rest of your India trip as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And do you guys have any closing notes for our attendees here? No, again, you know, thank you all for um, for everything you do as part of our as part of our broader Salesforce community in Ohana. We very much appreciate that. And reach out to us on uh, the various resources that, that we've got here. Uh, we'd be happy to uh, follow up on any on any more specific questions on one of the forums. So thanks everyone for your time. All right, that concludes our webinar for today. Thank you for joining. Uh, we have a lot of lightning stuff happening in this month. Feel free to check out uh, further emails about further webinars on lightning uh, and lightning components and stuff. And feel free to join our uh, APAC Salesforce Developer Webinars group uh, to stay uh, to stay to find I mean to be updated on what's going on in the developer webinars program here. Thank you so much. Until next time, see you later.